The Dick Cavett Show. Tonight, Dick's guests are Sammy Davis Jr., star of Family Affair, Anissa Jones, concert pianist Gary Olson, and Bob Rosengarten and the orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, Dick Cavett. <laughs> Thank you here in the studio and to those at home for letting us into your living rooms and bedrooms, as military intelligence is saying these days. <laughs> but they get a bigger laugh. Did you know about that, the Army spying? That was shocking yesterday. So they're actually, they've actually concealed cameras in people's boudoirs. How would you like to turn up in a training film at Fort Dix? <laughs> That's terrible. Say, it's a beautiful day in New York. I've kidded about the air in New York a lot, but you can always get a breath of fresh air in New York City. <laughs> the way you do it is find a car with New England license plates and puncture the tire. And... <laughs> Was it, is this Thursday? Yeah, yes. Thursday, right. See, we usually get a dreary, dull, dumb-looking audience on Thursday. <laughs> what a pleasure to see you. Yeah, we, do, we often, often do, for some reason. I don't know why that is. Yesterday was Ash Wednesday, if yes. I'm not mistaken. I always, I, I haven't, this is not a joke, but I always don't know it's Ash Wednesday and tell someone they have something. For it, I, because as a kid, I don't remember seeing the people with that. Does anyone know what you call that? The uh, the ash that Catholic people put on their forehead on Ash Wednesday. There must be a word for it. Does anyone in the band know? Hmm. Certainly. What is it? Whatever it is, it certainly slows up a monologue, doesn't it? No, I just have never known what that what that is called. And yesterday, you saw people with the ash on the forehead. I, it's either you know that it's a Catholic or Protestant who walked to work in New York. Uh, if you see. Well, I'm really glad we digressed on that for about five minutes. So you're not supposed to do jokes against women these days, as you know, but today, one of my secretaries, I was trying to find something, and I said to her, what on earth is your filing system? And she said, once over my nails with an emery board. And I thought, just testing you to see if you're the normal Wednesday audience. Hey, you know what they've done now for our safety? You'll be glad if you're here in New York. They've put marshals on the subways the way the planes have done. Yeah, because of the... It's working so far, not one subway has been hijacked to Havana. <laughs> Very excited about that. And there's the phone company. I, it is really ridiculous. Um, it's getting worse. I, yesterday, I, I made several calls. I not only could not get three out of three numbers that I dialed, but I got an obscene co phone call. Co oh, ha, ha. <laughs> obscene phone call that was meant for David Frost. That's what I was... <laughs> Even without being able to say it, it came out, didn't it? Where were we? Uh, oh, New York is an endless supply of humor, though. Um, they are scrapping 50 tugboats. That's in today's paper. They were very old, the tugboats. They're, it's very hard to find a boat anywhere in which the insurance policy includes falling off the edge of the earth. But that's, uh, they found that in several New York. Hey, do you know we're having another baby boom? Yeah. Well, they seem to know it in the balcony. <laughs> in fact, you can hear it in the balcony. No, there's another, it said the statistics say that there is another baby boom upon us and that this one started in 1968, which you will remember is the year President Nixon said he was going to bring us together. <laughs> Who wants to hear a Con Edison joke? <laughs> Who has one? Con Edison is a joke. They've been defending themselves lately in the paper. They've been saying that all their power failures lately, this is the truth, this yesterday's paper, has been an act of God. They're, sim they're jealous because when he said, let there be light, it worked. <laughs> you mean I got one finally? Listen, I... Listen I better get out of here because uh, we, we have, as you know, uh, moving right along, we have... Um, I always say that when we aren't moving right along. But Sammy Davis Jr. is here today. He's never been here before. And as you know, he's a singer. Because he's here, we have a singer, a dancer, an actor, a comedian, uh, an impressionist, and an author. 
cancel him. We're overbooked. <laughs> and uh, Anissa Jones from Family Affair, a remarkable young lady whom I have not met but been warned about. And um, <laughs> Garrick Olson, who won the Chopin Festival, a terrific pianist. So why should I stand out here? Put that lady in the ejector seat. Oh, am I on? <laughs> I've been on television all this time? Well, let me get this straight. Wait a minute. Your sister doesn't want to come here unless I'm... Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> you know, under the new pornography laws, I can declare the balcony obscene and have it sent back. Let me introduce someone uh, right now that I've never introduced before, and it's easy to over-introduce him, and it's hard to uh, not over-introduce him, but uh, they, they, there's a sense in which all men are created equal, but they certainly didn't get equal amounts of talent, and Sammy Davis got enough for about 20 people. Will you welcome, please, Sammy Davis, Jr.? <laughs> You, you, you dress uh, considerably. You make me feel shabby. You make me... Uh, is either of us getting, either of us getting married today? <laughs> I, no, I, I tell you what happened. Yeah. I, in Vegas, where I, Las Vegas, where I just closed, uh -huh. for the first time in about seven years, I went back to wearing tuxedos for the type of show I wanted to do. And we went back to doing all of the old songs and things because it seems to be that kind of trend. And I figured it would just shake everybody up if I wore it on television. It did. What's the last time you wore a tuxedo on television? About, about between five and seven years. Five and seven. Yeah. That's close enough for me. You're going to do my bar mitzvah suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. You're going to kid me about being a Gentile now? No, I don't do them kind of jokes. No, you don't. No, no. But you're doing some of the older numbers. Yes. And so you decided to wear a tux in case they're so old they die. <laughs> Just for... Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, of course. <laughs> you want to you let yeah. me do a number out here and you see if they die on me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would you take a chance? Take a chance? Okay. Wait a minute. Before I... Before I do it, I must say that I've looked for to sitting in the chair next to you. I'm a fan, man. Are you? I really am, and I watch the show, and I mean that honest to gosh. Well, if that's, if that's you. true, you can sit in the chair with me. <laughs> Go ahead. Here we are. Gee, that was good of you to do that, old man. Terribly decent of you to be so kind to allow me. Wait a minute, I'm not David Frost. <laughs> Jeez, you know, I gotta ask you this. Do you ever bomb? I mean, I can't imagine. There are a few entertainers who are so dynamite that just, uh, I've put you in a strange position now because you yes, have to I've, be modest I've, and I've, say, no, sometimes no. I do, or you have to say, no, I'm perfect. Mm. I, I, aren't you, can I rephrase the question? I no, mean, I, want, I, mean, I want you to keep the question exactly as it was. Right. Of course you, of course I have. You mean and I, I've gone home sick about it. And you have done bad, man, just walked out. Sometimes I do bad when the audience is good. And they, they've given me a, a 95, and I didn't earn but a 50. And, and feel I, guilty I about feel that? guilty about it, because I set a level for myself. No kidding. That's why, after 40 years, it's, you know, yeah. it's still fun for me. Because they've got to set a level. You have a level. Yeah, my level. I, I've decided early on, though, to set the level quite low. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then I'm seldom disappointed, even though they always are. <laughs> no, but uh, that's interesting, because I couldn't imagine uh, I, I was thinking a comedian, you know, can go out and get absolutely, literally no laughs, not one laugh. Yeah. I thought it'd be funny if a singer went out sometime and ended a song on a high note and ta da and cut off. <laughs> Just no, no applause. I'll tell you where that Nothing. happened to me. That happened to me in Osaka. Osaka, Japan? Or? In Japan, Osaka, Japan. I assume Japan. not Osaka, Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I did, we worked, we did a concert. And when you go to Japan, you go to the, over there to the Orient, you, you work a kind of a strange thing. You do one night in a big auditorium where 8,000 people come. Mm -hmm. And it was fantastic. And the kids and everybody came. It was beautiful. The next night we worked in a nightclub. Yeah. And it was elderly Japanese people. Now, I had never worked in a nightclub for elderly Japanese people. Mm -hmm. Somehow that kind of group just don't come to the Concord. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I don't know what to expect, but I got Augie and Margo on the bill, dance team, well known, and they walked out on the stage, it's true, yeah. walked out on the stage and they came off in four minutes. I went, what are them? He said, they're murder. That's what Augie said, they're murder. He said, so I cut one number out, because they only did 12 minutes, right? And there was one big Spanish thing that they did. So I said, what murder? We've been over here for a week and a half and everybody loves us. I walked out and it was complete silence. Now those were the days that I didn't feel as secure as I feel about my career, about yeah. my, where my head was, you know. So, uh, I went out and did all that old black magic. Yeah, well, gee whiz, I don't know. I don't know. I the impressions. All right, you guys, up against the wall. All about, all about, you dirty rat, you're gonna get it. <laughs> dancing, dancing, playing the drums, the vibes, everything at the end. And they nursed it, rehearsed it, gave out the news. And the Southland gave birth one more time. Birth of the book. Wow, 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 wow. I've never oh. been so, I didn't know what to do. You mean it's happened the night? You, you I were... walked off the stage and <laughs> the man who owned the club, a very nice man, came back. He says, ah, oh, you are a very big hit. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to you. You mean because they didn't attack, you assumed that no, you he, were... No, he meant that they never applaud for anybody, but the word of mouth as the people were leaving was good. And they were all elderly, rich Japanese men who come with their chicks, mm -hmm. you know. So they ain't don't want to raise up a lot of fuss or party. <laughs> Saving <somebody> energy. Might... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They might cause a ruckus and somebody will recognize them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's oh, a true story. <laughs> it was so bad, well. George Rhodes can tell you, that it's a true, my conductor could tell you, it's a $5 fine for anybody in my group to mention Osaka. <laughs> oh, I'm going to remember that. I, that's, that's wonderful. We have a message and we'll be right back. <laughs> um, I only have a minute here. That's why I'm filling it. Okay. When you've been in this business as long as I have, you'll know how to fill a minute with... We have to... Ah, uh, most amusing, Mr. Davis. <laughs> we, we want to uh, take a station break and we'll be right back. <laughs> that was Richard Liu. We'll be right back, yes. Peace and love? Oh. I We're... thought that was peace and love. I didn't know. <laughs> Man giving signals there. That's always, that always makes me nervous when they count you down. I mean, uh, I figure just let it happen. That's it? Yeah. You don't waste a second. I noticed that little break we had there, you were... Do you well, still I, drive yourself to the brink of exhaustion or over the brink, or do you stop just this side of the brink? No, I, I, uh, I still like having fun. I still like doing nutty things like that, but yeah. I'm 45, and I've been married almost a year, and I've uh, been in the hospital four times. <laughs> <laughs> Because my wife is 25, that's why I've been in the hospital <laughs> four times. Uh, <laughs> no, seriously, uh, I, I love working. I love to work. But I've found that in the last couple of years, in the last year particularly, mm -hmm. I have contained the offstage activity. So that when you get, when well, you're coming here to do this show, get yeah. your thing together, man, so that you can do it and yeah. have fun doing it. Yeah. But when I leave here, and I go back to the solitude of our, our private lives, mm -hmm. whether it be in a hotel or a house, then I relax. I love to relax. But that's a change for you, isn't it? You used yes. to be on when you were off oh, as well as when you were on. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. Well, I wonder what changes in you. Does, does it have to do with age? I think that has a lot to do with it. The steps yeah. get a little steeper. The notes get a little harder to hit. Yeah. 
and you need rest. The truth of the matter is, I, I was, I've been ill a couple of times in the last year and a half. Seriously ill. And I mean, kind of close for me. And to the, close to the point that it looked like I'd have to take two or three years off to rest. From work, yeah. from overwork? From overwork. Yeah. And I've also got a, a good cat who is my partner, Simosh, who takes care of things for me. And he's been with me. We've been together now. We've been, we've been friends for 15, 16 years, but... How long have you known each other? Oh, about a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. we've, no, he was the man that fought for me to get me on television. You know, he fought for me to get me dramatic shows on television. Yeah. And uh, he's a good friend, but he's also a good business manager, a good business partner. And when he joined me, he got me my first vacation that I had had in about six years. Mm. That was the first thing he accomplished. You and also got my debts paid up, you know. Your debts? Yep. Are you bad with money? No, I think I'm pretty good with it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. I go like a sailor. Whoopee! <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what money's for then. I see. But it's fairy money, really, isn't it, in show business, as the English say? Yeah, I guess The so. English can get away with saying it's fairy money, but... Uh, <laughs> now, I've heard the English use that expression, it's fairy gold that you make in show business. It vanishes at the touch of the fingers. Well, I, I think there's... I think there's a realization that comes. I think that a man, any man, proportionately to what he makes, should be allowed. If it's a, if it's a cat that's a construction cat and he makes 10,000 a year, mm -hmm. I think he needs to blow a hundred dollars, just yeah. on something stupid and dumb, yeah. just a good time, whoopee, yeah. just good time. I think if I make two and a half million, I'm entitled to blow maybe five, ten thousand dollars out of the year. Just blow it. I mean, just, if I feel yeah. like this going, we'll be out the window. Yeah. Well, where, where, where are you going to do that next? Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, <laughs> a lot of us <laughs> oh. But I don't think you have a right to deny your family uh, or, or the, the personal needs. I don't yeah. think you should be in debt up to your ears, which I was. You know, I make no bones about it, man. I'm not, and I'm not, nor am I proud about it. Yeah. But I do feel that there's a happy medium that you can reach and keep your family secure and live in a style that you like mm -hmm. and do the things you want to do without worrying. If I don't work tomorrow, man, I'll be, I'll be you know, I'll be on welfare, you know? Wow. And I was at that point one time. That's why That's I work amazing. so much. Yeah. People can't believe that, you know, they think... Uh, another thing people can't believe is when someone appears on a show like this and they say, um, they'll do a joke about uh, working for scale or something like that, and people think, I'd be willing to spend one night for 265 or 320 or whatever it is. It's hard for them to believe that that actually can be meaningless money to someone who has enormous taxes, enormous financial problems and all. <laughs> you know, and they always think that they get a kind of... Uh, but it's true. It is it true. It is true. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, I, I, why is it that some people are born able to imitate Humphrey Bogart and others are not? It isn't fair. It isn't, I have uh, always thought that uh, it would be... I, I, I don't know. I, I was like, I'm, I'm a lucky cat, you know. I, I've, I've been lucky all my life, you know, because yeah. I wanted to do impersonations. When I came out of the Army in the 40s, uh, I had the good fortune of hanging around Hanson's when it was open, and Will Jordan and Larry Storch and Dick Wesson, mm -hmm. and all those guys were working the theaters up and down the street. Uh, and... They taught me. They really, we would sit there in the afternoon and I would start to do something and all of the impressionists would hang out on the corner. And I'd say, hey, I got one. I think I got one. I think I finally got Jimmy Stewart. And, and you know, and Will or, or Larry Storch would say, no, you haven't got it, man. That is no. Uh, it's got to be up here. Uh, you got it too low. And when you do it, you got to have a, a sort of a, a draw behind it. Yeah. So that, uh, that it disappears in here. And oh, then you realize, hey, man, all of the exciting cats, mm -hmm. you know, I love Elliot Gould. I cannot impersonate him. So I God, figured... I never heard anyone do Elliot Gould. I don't think you're gonna. I don't think I am either. <laughs> <laughs> because it's True. hard to do, because it's... Poison. We've gone to the natural. Yeah. And, you know, I defy someone to imitate the man that played Joe. You in know, the movie. In the movie. Yeah. Because yeah. it's... He's so natural, he's so us, that mm -hmm. it's, it becomes almost impossible. But yet, and still, there are guys today who, 
who really swing with impressions, you yeah. know. Frank Gorshin scares you to death, you know, and, and many other cats around. Is it true that you do Olivier? I've never heard anyone do Olivier. Florence of course Olivier. I do Olivier. You do Olivier? Yes. Really? Well, what would you like to hear me do from uh, oh, Olivier? A couple acts from King Lear would be nice. So. <laughs> well, he only did Lear once. Uh, how about Richard III? I'll settle for Dick III. Okay. <laughs> now is the winter of our discontent. Made glorious summer in this son of York. Since I cannot, by rightful claim, my way to the throne, I shall hack and hew my way instead. Oh, that's great. <laughs> hmm. That's not how I do it, but that is... <laughs> That is, he, he, did a, he did that very strange voice when he did. A lot yes. of people criticized him for that. They thought yes. it was too caricatured for the role. But he does it all because he felt, uh, mm. Sir Lawrence told me that he felt that with the, with the humpback, that yeah. he wanted to have a voice that was in here. Yeah. And when he did Hamlet, because Hamlet is so fey, he did a, another thing. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. But if you yeah. mouth it, as many of your players do, I sleep very fey. Here, yeah. which is what yes. an impressionist has to catch. Yeah. I could listen to impressions for days on end without uh, being bored by them. I just love them. How about my Willie Bess? <laughs> How does your Willie Bess stack up to yeah. other Willie Besses? Do you know who Willie Bess was, Dick? Uh, well, uh, Willie Bess, uh, Willie, uh, no, no, not exactly. <laughs> I knew most of the Bess family, but I, <laughs> Willie, you know, was a retired. Willie Bess was the, was the black comedian who did the things in the old days. Uh, which I guess some people would say was Uncle Tom, but I considered him a character actor. So to me, if I can do Cagney, I can do Willie Bess. Uh, he was a cat with Bob Hope and the Ghost Breakers, who mumble. Remember, oh, you remember the, the, movie the, yeah. the Ghost Breakers? When he says, yeah. I don't know what they're doing around here. I'm around here, and this one around here. I'm around here with the body. I do a good Willie Bess. Like a man. We, uh... To go from Sir Lawrence Olivier to Willie Best must hurt. It must be a <laughs> wrench. We'll be right back. With Bob Hope and the Ghost Breakers, who mumble. You remember the, you oh, remember the, the movie, the, yeah. the Ghost Breakers? When he says, yeah. I don't know what they're doing around here. I'm around here, and there's one around here. I'm around here with the body. <laughs> I do a good Willie Best. That's a handy. We, uh... <laughs> to go from Sir Lawrence Olivier to Willie Best must hurt. It must be a... <laughs> Wrench, we'll be right back. So you did, uh, I did Richard Liu recently on the show, so I guess it's too early to do it again. That's my one impression that I can knock people out with, Richard Liu. And uh, it's such a shame. Which, I, which, which picture do you do? I, I usually do the Purple Heart. Purple I Heart? That. Oh, yes, I love that. Dana Andrews and Richard Liu, and I'd love to get them both on some night and see what they, but the Purple do Heart was a good. Do you know that he really went, he went through a real traumatic experience about, you know, because after the war, having played all of those heavies, yeah. he opened up a restaurant. He opened up first a clothing store, then he opened up a restaurant in Hollywood. And people would come in, and when the, after the war was over, and he, he got so many, it started out jokingly, and he got so many of this, mm -hmm. that he really almost had a nervous breakdown. Because he represented the villain for he so many years. He represented yeah. the villain. Yeah. And he got tired of people going, Yankee dog, you die, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, UCLA, I went, UCLA, whatever <laughs> it is, you know. Yes. And I, I heard this from a good friend. Now, I don't know if it's true, because I don't, I've met him several times, but mm -hmm. he never told me a story, but I heard it from someone. If it's true, it's a pretty sad state of affairs. You yeah, know? Really? I, I can believe it, because you can imagine, you know, they get the same things said to you over and over. Jack Benny, I was in an elevator once with, one time, and within five floors, somebody said, is it true you have a Maxwell? Somebody else said, is it true you're 39? Somebody else said, do you really play the violin? You know, you must just get numb, finally. What do they say to you, is it true that? Are you really Jewish? <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. That's, that's most of it yeah. for me. Yeah. In fact, that's, that's really predominantly. Uh, until I went to Israel. When I went to Israel, and the press, I must say, was very kind about the trip, mm -hmm. and they didn't try to do any zips or zaps, and uh, you know, I went to the, you know, I went over to entertain the soldiers and appear at hospital. And I did one benefit with Moshe, for, uh, which Moshe Diane, General Diane, was, was kind enough to sponsor for all the proceeds going to the veterans. 
But after that, it was cool. I don't get it as much now, but I used to get it all the time because every performer, including myself, joked about it. Yeah. So that people thought that it was not true. Yeah. But you really must have gotten, had those jokes up to here, by, oh. or even higher, uh, probably. Probably. Yeah. Could you spend a week in a cabin in the mountains uh, alone and, and not go berserk, or do you need the audience after a few days? No. I need my old lady, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I need. I just need my old lady. Your wife? My, my wife, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> we must have respect for women these days. More no, than, no, more I, I say that with, with the most affection. That's yeah. a show business terminology. My hey, man, I'm going to go pick up my old lady. And yeah. we don't mean that in terms of old or disrespectfully at all. We mean that like, uh, like we say in show business, I know you say it, hey, well, the kids are going to meet later. We don't mean their children. We mean that right. as show business affection. My wife, if I was with my wife, I could be any place for any amount of time, wouldn't miss the audience, television, or anything else. Really? Mm-hmm. Gee, must be some old lady. <laughs> <laughs> you, what, what does a guy say who's actually married to an old lady? Does he say, I'm going to pick up the kid? Or what? I don't know. <laughs> Would your wife care to be seen? Uh, she's going, no, no, no. There's my wife right there. Well, Wait a minute. I won't embarrass her. I'll just. Um, one of the people in this area of the audience is Mrs. Davis Jr. I mean, she doesn't want to be identified, so I thought I would. How are you? I thought I thought I did that discreetly. I thought you were Marvin. I love showbiz. <laughs> I, I know that um, it's, it's hard to believe. That oh, how about that? They're raiding something nearby. Can you hear that? <laughs> oh, wow. That always happens when some elderly actress is on doing a uh, reading from uh, a shake or something. The, the siren goes off like that. <clears throat> Say, would you do another thing for us? I, I don't like to put a performer on the spot, but it's so seldom that we get you here. And um, we did build that stool. And, uh, and we, <laughs> we built that microphone. Of course I will. Be my, and, can we can we do something kind of now? We did some old songs. Let's yeah. do something now, okay? Something today. Yeah. All right. Yeah.